All right. I'm here with Tiffany Bias Patman. How are you doing, Tiffany? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. I'm glad we could finally get you on here. Um, just a little bit of background for everybody else. Um, we've known each other since probably like middle school, I guess. We went to middle school and high school together. So it's been a long time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, can you just introduce yourself a little bit to the listeners? Yeah. Um, my name is Tiffany Bias Patman. I um, went to Andover Central. I grew up in Wichita, um, born and raised. Um, I guess I just... Everyone kind of knows me for basketball. Um, I played basketball my whole life and um, just kind of excelled in that, had a lot of success in high school and college and and won a championship uh, playing professionally. So that has been a blessing just to be able to do something that I love um, for, I guess, I, I hate saying it sounding old, but for 20 some years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm definitely a new mom. So that's been Congrats. something that I, thank you, thank you, um, have been just trying to understand like that balance and that switch and um, just trying to see how life is different now with a little baby they have to look after. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's a strange time. Um, how old's your baby now? Six months. Six months. So, I mean, you're definitely overlapping and especially the resurgence of the pandemic. And we had our girl in April, kind of the first round of the pandemic. And so it's just crazy to know what to do and being overly cautious, but yeah. Yes. I feel like oh, I'm yeah. like, I thought I'd never be like that bubble parent, but I'm like, oh my gosh, he's a bubble baby. Like you just, you just don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. You don't know. So you, yeah, you got to be overprotective, but um, yeah. So basketball, we went to, like you said, grew up in Wichita. Um, we went to Andover <laughs> Central basketball was always a huge part of your life. Um, what was kind of the inspiration? Um, and I guess, how do you, how do you think you got to that level? Um, kind of growing up, what did that look like? Um, uh, my inspiration, that's actually really good. Um, I think I've always wanted to do what my older brother did. Like he always wanted to tag along with his friends mm -hmm. and play outside, play football, play basketball, whatever it was. Um, but it's just like at a young age. I never can really explain it, but like, I just knew that I've always wanted to play basketball. Like I knew I wanted to go professional. I want this to new, like at age five, six, like I was like, oh, I want to be a professional basketball player. Like I always knew it. Um, so that's just something like, I inspired to be was just a basketball player and it wasn't it's was just that work ethic I just always loved being outside I love jump rope and I love shooting I love just being in the game and just watching the game mm -hmm. um I think that's what inspired me was kind of my my brother and then my dad so my mm -hmm. dad has always been a huge influence um in my life and in my especially my career my basketball career and he's always pushed me and you know was always in my corner no matter what so yeah absolutely I think everyone knew how intense the Francis bias workouts could be Ooh. so they're like, your dad's going to be there. Oh man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sick that day. I'm actually busy. So uh, was, was there uh, ever a doubt that you could play pro or that you would make it? Or was that always like, no, I'm going to make it like that's, that's where I'm headed. No, I really had that confidence in me. Like I, that's where I'm headed. Like I'm going to go. I, of course I had a whole bunch of naysayers, a whole bunch of doubters mm -hmm. that always told me like, I'm too small. Um, I'm never going to be there. Uh, you know, I'm just a track star. Um, mm -hmm. I've had all those comments that kind of would deter me a little bit or, you know, just kind of mentally kind of get at me like, am I too small? Am I too? But I've never really like in my mind, I knew I could get there. I knew that's what I wanted. And that was like my end goal. So yeah, for sure. Um, you mentioned uh, track star. And so you were kind mm -hmm. of a three sport athlete for a lot of it with volleyball and track and everything else. Yeah. What do you think about some of the people that are the kids nowadays or the parents that are saying like, no, you're just playing basketball. You're playing basketball year round. What do you kind of say to those parents? Um, or to I those kids, I guess. Yeah, I really would say um, to do different sports. I think that it was good. I think for me, it was an outlet for me. Um, I mean, I wasn't the greatest at volleyball, but I just love the hustle of it. I'm just, I was out that new, I mean, half what I was doing, but um, it was just a good breather. I think it's a good thing. It works different muscles. It works different eye, hand eye coordination. It works different muscles mm -hmm. of your brain. Um, I just think that it's just a good thing. Just at least try it, even if it's not for four years of high school, sure. maybe, maybe a year or two. Um, I just think it's really good to be well-rounded and play other sports and understand, you know what I mean? Just working different yeah. muscles and be able to just take a break. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's good. Like as much as I loved basketball, I loved playing and I, and I played year round. I played in the summer also, mm -hmm. but I, it was good for me to like, just take a breather and like, okay, I can just play volleyball and just have fun. Oh yeah. I'm not oh, yeah. saying basketball wasn't fun, but it just wasn't the end goal that I saw my vision in playing volleyball in my career is basketball. Right. So it was like something that I could just be like, you know what? I'm having fun with my, my friends and everybody else. So that was kind of one of those things I think for other athletes, they should play some other sports and just kind of take some ease off for me. That's what it was. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, so with your basketball career, you ended up going to Oklahoma State, cowgirl. Uh, why did you pick Oklahoma State, and when did you commit, and how was that process? Oh, it's so funny because now I can kind of say it. But like growing up, I was like Oklahoma State. You, I would never go to Oklahoma State. I do not <laughs> want to wear orange and black Halloween year round. No, mm -hmm. um, but no, it's so crazy. Um, I really, I I committed so early. I committed my sophomore year. Um, so super early, um, nowadays everyone's waiting to like the last day and to, you know, pick a hat. <laughs> um, but no, I, it was one of those things where I just stepped on that campus and kind of knew, mm -hmm. um, I thought I'd be that girl that was going to go far. I wanted to go to LA. I love fashion. I, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I thought I was going to go super far and, um, it came down to really like sitting back and like, what do I really want, mm -hmm. um, in college? And, um, I never realized how much of a family person I was till, I kind of thought about, I'm like, I really want my parents to see me play. I want to be able to go home for yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's just stepping on a campus and that those coaches, they are really faith-based. Um, it was something that I needed and mm -hmm. I didn't know that I needed. Um, of course, you know, growing up, we went to like the young lives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, I was trying to grow my walk, but I just wasn't there. Right. Um, I think that we can all talk about that now. Like um, yeah. during high school, I was a little crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm completely open to talking about that. Just, that's just my testimony of my walk. And yeah. um, I just wasn't all the way um, walking in my faith. Um, and so to go to a college and where they were kind of just a home feeling of like, Hey, we really are about our faith. We take our family serious. We, you know, we're going to pray. We're going to do all this stuff. And it just felt right in um, Oklahoma State. I ended up saying, I didn't even know. I was like, just in a daze. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go here. And the coaches were like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's commit. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I chose Oklahoma State just because of not only just the facilities and, you know, they have a great business program, but just, um, just that faith base and just that home feeling that mm -hmm. I knew that I had, sorry, my screen just, um, no, you're good. Went up. but, um, but yeah, the face faith base and just the camaraderie that was around them and how, mm -hmm. how much I could see my parents. So that was a big reason for me. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that's when your faith kind of took that next step then was just the, during those college years? Um, yeah, I would say a little bit of that. Can you still see me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah I can. Sorry, my screen was okay. Um, I think it was it was definitely that. Um, and then my coaches passed my sophomore mm -hmm. year, so that was a huge like shift, yeah. like a one eighty. Um, with my personality, not my personality and say, but just like, just life is so short. Um, right, your perspective, yeah. Bar, yeah, like we're living on borrowed time. Like anytime, um, God can tell us, like you know, this is your time, and you know, what I mean, and it, it's just so crazy. And I think it was that moment where it kind of switched and it like mm -hmm. clicked for me. Yeah, um, and it really started putting me on my path of um, really walking, walking in my faith, um, and really, you know, honing into like the God, that God gift that He gave me to like you know focus and play and um, yeah. you know and do those type of things. So. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can definitely attest to that. I mean, high school, it's, it's hard to, you might feel like you understand things and you, maybe you have your faith, like you're, you're grounded and some people definitely are, but a lot of people aren't. And I, I definitely know what you mean on that part. Um, and to the point about kind of playing close enough that your family can see, uh, my youngest brother Peyton played football at Missouri state for a very similar reason. Like he could have yeah. waited for another offer somewhere else, but it was only four hours away. He, uh, we could all come watch. My parents could come watch and yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely, I, now that when people ask me like, Oh, you didn't go to, you know, Oh, you gone safe or whatever it was. I'm right, like, right. like, I really truly do not regret any decision. Like that was the best Like my parents came to every game. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to spend so much time with them. Um, it was really just the best decision I made. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then you also had a phenomenal career there. You played for four years. Um, let's see, <laughs> I wrote a couple things down. So, uh, sweet 16 all time leader and assist, like it's a pretty yeah. good career. So I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, I did have great success there. Um, it definitely did. Um, Everything that I worked for definitely paid off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying anything was given to me easily. Um, I definitely have a motor. I definitely have work ethic. Um, I definitely was the type of player that was, I'm going to show you and you kind of follow my lead. Um, so it was definitely one of those things where Oklahoma State definitely took me under their wing and mm -hmm. I kind of just grew every yeah. year. So. Yeah, for sure. And obviously you were like a big time standout in high school. Was there any shift there or was it 
like your early years, was it like, okay, I'm going to be the, the kind of the star, the stud, or did you have to take like a different role? And I know there's a conversation we'll have in a minute kind of about that change into the WNBA, but what was that transition from high school to college like? Um, really, I didn't know what to expect. I think that's how every athlete goes into it. You're, everyone is the best of the best mm -hmm. coming into college. And um, you're just kind of looking around like, I kind of had, I was never, I was always very humble mm -hmm. about my game and um, I just kind of relied on my work ethic and I knew that I could outwork you. Yeah. Um, and that's not saying that in a cocky manner, um, but it's just kind of thing. That's just kind of what I was, that's right. what I did. <laughs> right. Um, and so coming in, like I knew the starting point guard was leaving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that why that's why a main, another reason why I chose Oklahoma State was just like a good position for me. Yeah. Great timing. Um, yeah. And I just knew that, um, these vets are going to respect me. Like, you know, the junior seniors are going to respect me just because I'm going to work my way um right. for getting their respect and i know i'm gonna start um right. so it's just like one of those right, things right. Like i i had that confidence and that that chip on me where it's like no i'm gonna be the starting point guard and i'm gonna show you why so yeah absolutely um so we played four years and then WNBA. so mm -hmm. what is that process like leading up to that are you like talking to agents like what does that process look like um and kind of leading into the draft yeah um it's so crazy because um the coach that brought me there passed away. Um, and so he kind of was like that person that knew everyone, knew all the agents and everything mm, like that. Mm -hmm. So by my senior year, um, it was kind of like the coach that was there, which I'm great friends with now. Um, mm. But um, it was just kind of that process of like, we didn't know. And right. so like, it was kind of like, I waited all the way till draft night and then I got an agent after. And it was like, oh, wow. I, was like I don't know what to do. And it's just like one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh. Um, but it was like, it was almost so much pressure that I almost put on myself um, of like, I really don't know what this is because like you hear WNBA and you know, if anyone doesn't know WNBA, it's kind of like, there's only two spots to make on every team pretty much. Um, and so when you're going into this, you're kind of like, okay, if I don't get drafted super high, I know that it's kind of like one of those chances once you start going down, like you're not going to make a roster almost because right, they almost right. kind of said um, so, but just knowing, like, I, I took that mentality of that work ethic going into, okay, I mean, they, they drafted me for a reason. They like what they mm -hmm. see. I'm not going to over, over, not overextend, but I'm not going to play outside my game. I'm going to do what I always do. Right. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my mentality going into WBA, knowing that, not knowing the twists and turns of WBA that was going to take, but, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was definitely a great achievement to um, be able to not only put on for, for Wichita uh, going mm -hmm. to the league, um, but for Oklahoma State too, just uh, all the hard work I paid off for all the, all the years I played basketball to get to that, that level. Yeah, for sure. Do you think, I guess, growing up in Wichita, kind of taking a little bit of a step back, but growing up in Wichita, do you think that's a benefit? Or do you think that's, it's harder to kind of get out and make it? Or do you think it's Oh, I mean, it just kind of depends where, I mean, every, everywhere is different, obviously, but what do you think, how do you think Wichita plays into that? Like, was there, um, I mean, the best competition, I'm sure you traveled in AAU or whatever, but what was that process like? Um, of course I played summer ball, um, mm -hmm. but as much, it's just hard to say this, but it's like, Wichita is not the place where you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go find me a basketball player, football player. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Oh, yeah. it's, just, it's just, that's how it is. So like when you come out of Wichita, that's I'm always really like, yeah, you're from Wichita. Yes. Okay. We were on the map. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. But um, no, it's, it's super hard. People are like Wichita, like Wichita, mm -hmm. like you guys, is there cows? Like where, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. I'm like okay, Wizard we, of Oz. Yeah. yeah I'm like, we are <laughs> civilized. Okay. We are a town. We have like, we are the, okay. We are there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it is something where, um, you don't hear a lot of people coming out of Wichita right. and it, and, and I don't know if it's not to knock anybody, anyone's talent, but I don't know right. if they're traveling as much, but there's just super talented uh, athletes that's in other States. That's it's yeah. not like how Wichita, I feel like it's very lax when it comes to sports. Like it's not as competitive as where it is in a Texas or New York or Cali, right. where, you know, people have that, that, that chip on their shoulder where it's like, I'm gonna go to work and I'm a, you know what I mean? I just yeah, feel like yeah. not work ethic as much as in, um, in Wichita and I'm not knocking one. Cause I, I literally haven't been on the circuit as much, um, to see these um, players play, but right. that's just where yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to hear your perspective. Cause I talked to like Devonte Harris, who's in the NFL right now. And just to see kind of similar perspectives, but like, it is harder from Wichita, it seems like, because yeah, like you said, like 
we might maybe not work ethic, but just, we don't get noticed the people here in town. Like we don't, they don't even get a shot necessarily sometimes. And so, it, but it's, it's awesome to see. I mean, like again, Devonte or like Jordan Phillips from circle or you or mm -hmm. like Jalen Agnew WNBA. And so it's really cool to see, I mean, you guys make it to the highest level and then, I mean, you won a championship. How many people can say they won a championship at the I, highest I'm level? It's three books forever. I'll take it. I will That's take awesome. it. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so hopping back to that. So you went to the Phoenix Mercury. Um, you yeah. won your first ring. You played with some legends, um, Diana legend. Taurasi and um, Brittany Griner. Uh, and then, I mean, later on played with the, some other great players. What is that like kind of getting, finally getting to that level? Um, and what's the difference between that and college? Um, well, let me see. Let me, how do I want to answer this one first? Um, getting there, um, it's an amazing achievement, but you know, as an athlete and once you get there, you're never satisfied. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. want to succeed. You want to be successful. You want to play, you want to do all these things. Yeah. Um, and so being a part of that first, uh, my rookie and I won a championship, like I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, okay, <laughs> next year. Cause it, I mean, to put it like this, I played my whole career. I've always played the whole game. I played 40 minutes. I've done what right. I, I wanted to do where it's like, I felt no pressure on my shoulders, um, to going to Phoenix <laughs> and, you know, and I was fine, not maybe not playing, but you know what I mean? Not right, playing right. as much. Cause it's like, Donna tries, like I'm learning. Like I, I was soaking on it all in and I'm mm -hmm. um, taking it all in. And, um, I think it was a, a mental thing for me. And I think that's so, so big about today is that mental health is, mm -hmm. um, it really took a toll on me of just not playing at all. Sure. Um, I was averaging literally two minutes a, a night going from aver averaging 40. Um, right. and so it just kind of like a 180 of like, okay, what do I do now? Like work ethic yeah. is not enough. Like me working hard and practice, <laughs> me doing everything and busting my butt. Like it's, it wasn't enough. Um, right. and it's one of those things like, oh crap, like, what do I do? Yeah. Um, and it was like, and my, my faith, my faith wavered a little bit because I'm like, I was like, Lord, like what, like, you know I mean? You, you got yeah. me to this point. Like, what am I not doing? Like, what, what are you trying to teach me? Like, and, right, and right. I was searching for that so much and, and I kind of lost my way and lost my path where I wasn't as focused, um, on basketball as much. And cause I was like, well, am I not good enough to mm -hmm. be in? Like I'm on a team and you know, my second year I make the team and I'm, and I'm still not getting playing time. And so right. I'm like, what is it? Like, what am I doing? And, um, it was just one of those things like that transition. Like, I just want athletes to know that like you are enough. I'm so sorry. That's my, no, you're fine. That's mine. um, just like you are enough. Um, and it's not saying that you're not good enough. It's just sometimes the fit or the politics or some things just, um, not in your, your, your path that God has for you. So, mm -hmm. um, it was just one of those things where it was definitely a learning experience for those two years. And I'm mm -hmm. completely utterly grateful and humble for having a championship ring and, and having those experiences and learning those life lessons with those ladies. And, mm -hmm. um, it's just so that, that transition from college to professional, it's just strictly, you have to remember it's a business at the end of right, the day. Right. Um, yeah, and you absolutely. really have to kind of view it as that and not take, take it so personal. And I think that's what I learned, um, a little late, but, um, sure. that's, definitely something for athletes going the next level is to know that it's definitely a business and to to really have some mentorship I think that's what yeah. I liked was that mentorship of just having someone like hey snap out of it you're okay <laughs> and you're gonna get through it yeah but, yeah. yeah for sure um so can you walk me through a little bit of the rest of your or I guess the rest of your WNBA career yeah um so I played two years in Phoenix um it was so crazy because my testimony is just, I don't feel like people really know how much I jumped. Um, it was just like, I went to Seattle for a hot second. Um, that was a crazy, crazy situation. Um, I ended up leaving three days later. Um, so then I'm sitting at home, like really sulking, like poor me type thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and then I got a call from Dallas, um, got a workout with them. I ended up finishing the season out with them. Um, and then got signed for the next year. Um, that ended up just being a politics situation um, where a UConn player, it, it, it kind of, it is what sure. it is. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it, it just happened. It didn't work out for me there. Um, mm -hmm. And so after that, um, I'm really like, my faith is really like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Cause right. you know, at, at the end of the day, I've played basketball my whole life. And so 
um, I had this mentality of like basketball is me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really, I'm still not learning the lesson he's trying to tell me. Right, <laughs> Cause I'm just right. like all about basketball. I'm thinking like, that's me. And that, you know what I mean? If I don't have basketball, I'm nobody, you know? And so I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, man, what am I going to do? I'm still training. I'm trying to, you know, figure out, you know, talk to my agent, like what's next. Um, cause it doesn't look good when you get cut twice. Okay. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, um, I think it was like a good whole year. I didn't get picked up. Um, and, you know, I'm really looking in the mirror and I'm asking myself like, okay, Tiff, like, um, are you going to do this? Like, what is it? Like, what do you want to do? Like, are you done or do you want to give more push? So um, being drafted, you people usually don't have to go to the combine, but, you know, I just felt like um, I was convicted to really like, okay, I need to humble myself. Um, and I went to a combine um, where a lot of the w- WBA coaches go before the season, um, mm-hmm. just seeing, you know, older, <clears throat> older players or anything like that. Um, yeah. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to humble myself. I know I need to stop thinking like you were drafted, all this stuff. Like, um, and I went and I got um, noticed by a couple coaches, but New York ended up signing me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's kind of one of those things. It's like, when you're out of the league, um, you usually don't get back in the league right, right. <laughs> Especially when yeah. you see the season no one's seen you play and I'm not the one to kind of go overseas I I just love spending time with my family and I love different hobbies outside outside of basketball mm-hmm. um, and so that was a big <laughs> one for me too that I didn't go overseas um, but I ended up playing with New York um, and I had a good preseason I had a good first half and then once again, they are just bringing someone in uh, from overseas um, and mm-hmm. it's politics and one of those things like I'm kind of like the lowest one on the chopping board. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that was kind of like my little journey of WBA of just kind of like weathering the storm, um, yeah. playing through it, um, fighting through it, training, still trying to get back and fighting back. And, um, and, and you know, at the end of the day, um, it was really just like that my testimony of that walk of just having faith and believing that he'll get me back to where I need to be and maybe it wasn't to be completely successful as I wanted to be in the league but that platform to have to be able to mentor to girls and to Mm -hmm. speak into girls and pour into girls and just give that knowledge that I have gained um is um just gold in itself so yeah that's invaluable for sure um so just real quick the overseas stuff so Mm -hmm. when is the WNBA season I know it's in the summer but like when does it start and end so it's like April, end of April slash May, um, and then it goes into September. Yeah, end of September. Okay. And so then do most girls go overseas then? Yes. Yeah, so that's okay. where, I mean, league now has, you know, shifted and it makes more money. We make more money in the league a little bit now. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, everyone goes overseas okay. and that's like, right. So if you end early and you're not in playoffs, usually teams want you to come over and, you know, right, right after, after you get done. Um, but some, sometimes you can, you know, wait a couple weeks or whatever, but like, yeah, it's, it's a full, full season. That's crazy. Yeah. It's always, you know, traveling. Yeah. I think it might be different now just because COVID. Um, right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Years. And so it's like some countries are, some countries aren't um, right. they less or so it's just really, it's up in the air. And now that, <clears throat> that people are so focused on um, women empowerment and basketball yeah. now and in every sport, um, right, right. I think it's good for marketing and things that they want to do off the court now. So. No, yeah. That's good to see that. I mean, girls are finally making a little bit more money it's kind of it's crazy i mean obviously you never see a guys or an nba player have to go play overseas or something to make some extra cash and right exactly yeah. i mean man i think their per diem is <laughs> yeah that's crazy i yeah i guess the, the whole extent of like uh overseas basketball in general but women's overseas basketball is what i saw in love and basketball is about the extent of what i i know so not right um, <laughs> Uh, so one more thing I wanted to talk about was um, the Thailand national team. Yes. So have you have played with them or how, what has that been like? Yes. So um, it has always been one of my biggest things to play for the national team. Um, my grandma's Thai. Um, I wanted to do it while she was still here and living because mm-hmm. I know it's such an honor and she'd be super proud, but um, I finally did um, get that. Um, and I played in the sea games with them. I was over there for a really long time. I was over there for a good, I want to say almost seven months. Wow. Okay. Um, just training with them. Um, just learning the culture, um, and just be kind of embracing, um, and just kind of, I felt kind of connected with my grandma just cause mm-hmm. I mean, she'd be with me if, if she was here, um, right. doing all that stuff. But, um, yeah, it was amazing experience. Um, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to go back or not. Sure. Um, 
COVID kind of has me in one of those little limbo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but no, it was an amazing experience and I, and I love each one of those girls. So. Very cool. Uh, just out of curiosity, how does like basketball in Thailand stack up to like college or NBA, WNBA here? Um, yeah, yep. All right. There we go. <laughs> I was just curious. I had to ask. It, they're so hardworking though. I will right. say that. like yeah. their work ethic, like it is like top notch, like they go hard. Um, but when I say like, when it comes to like skill level, yeah. I, there's a big gap sure. and that's because they just start so late playing. Right, um, right. And I think just not having that type of um, training or people to really pour into them on that level, I think that's that's what it what it is. And I think they watch so much um, film of like us and NBA, right, right. all that stuff, and they know everything. It's just um, having those techniques and footwork and skill work. Um, it's really you can tell the difference. Right. And they probably love when you come over and are on their team. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, they're uh, all. We always do different stuff so it's great um oh, yeah. they push me they push me to be better um they push me just to you know really um just to um embrace the moment mm -hmm. um so um i love going over there it's always happy smiles they always smile so it's always uplifting to like have fun mm -hmm. just yeah for sure um so you mentioned you didn't go overseas because you have some other interests. Um, and I know a couple are like modeling. Um, you did a little bit of broadcasting um, and you're really into fashion. Can so you talk up a little bit about like modeling or fashion or whichever avenue you want to yeah. take that? Yeah, for sure. Um, when I first, I did go overseas for a little bit. I went to Israel, I went to Hungary, but it was just like one of those things where it's like, I was like here and I came out and I was like, oh, this mm -hmm. is not for me. Um, so, but the reason why I really didn't want to say it was because those three things. So the modeling, I definitely loved modeling. I loved doing being in front of the camera and all that stuff, I still do. Um, it's just, I'm taking kind of a different approach to it now. Um, okay. um, I still would love to do it. I think it'd just be on a different level of like mm -hmm. how it aligns with my walk. Sure. Um, and then with broadcasting, I'm actually trying to get back into it um, and doing some more stuff with that and getting more, um, you know, reaching back out to my connections and getting involved with basketball because I still want to be a part of basketball. And I think yeah. that's the best way for me to be a part of it is that broadcasting. I just, you know, you know me, I love to talk. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I just, I, I just love, I just love doing it. So that's something I'm really focusing on. I'm working on, you know, getting some reels and um, really just being a, a student of the game and really, mm -hmm. you know, learning the ins and out of broadcasting. Sure. Do you know what level you would want to do that at? Is that like WNBA side or like sideline reporting or NBA or what, what level would you like to do? Um, I kind of want to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I definitely would love to do WNBA. I don't mind it. Not such a sore subject anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts a lot of when you're not playing. Um, but no, I would love to do WNBA. I would love to do NBA. Um, I do like sideline reporting. Um, but yeah, that's something that um, I, I like taking a step of everything. I think I've taken a little bit and I think um, whichever way God has me going, I'm yeah. obviously going head first. Um, so yeah, for sure. any level doesn't really bother me. Cool. Well, I'll uh, give Mark Cuban a call and see if I can get Thank you in. <laughs> Let him know. That's what I'm here for. Um, so talk about fashion. So you have a fashion line. What has your journey been with fashion? Um, I feel like a couple years ago, I could be wrong. You had like a bias brand. Um, and now you have God benefits. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I've always loved fashion. I just love to just play around patterns, textures, whatever it is. Um, I just, my, I always gravitated towards fashion growing up. Um, I've always knew I wanted to have a clothing line on the side. Um, I definitely wanted to have an athleisure line. Um, that was going to be the bias line. Um, mm -hmm. but someone I had my, my own last name trademarked <laughs> <laughs> and they want to let it go. So ah. um, I took a break from that just because I, um, just didn't feel like I was convicted at that time to really focus on that. Yeah. Um, and then that's when my, I was really truly in my walk and I came up with, um, this line, God benefits, um, mm -hmm. that I just kind of soft launched last year, um, before I had the baby who launches something and <laughs> like, come on now. Yeah, like, good timing mid pandemic with a baby. Good timing. <laughs> I was like, let me launch it right before she comes and it'd be perfect. I was like the worst idea, <laughs> but no, um, it had, it was great. Like great support, everything like that. I just, um, I'm about to do another relaunch next month of just really, I'm focused okay. on um, so yeah, it's my baby. It's got benefits. Um, it's really a testimony of my walk. Um, just being grateful of all God's benefits. I mean, just being selfless, um, 
just that benefits we have that that love that gratefulness um just everything above um so it's really um something that i hold dear to my heart because it's just i really want people to to know just about my faith and my um i think that before i've been so i wouldn't say i guess the word be timid Mm -hmm. to know that you know i mean if you're a believer in your walk it's kind of it's hard especially when you're yeah to learn and grasp everything and it's just like now i'm just kind of like i feel like convicted to just like all right just share who you are um and be um unapologetic about it um so i'm just doing the lord's work and just not expecting anything back from it so no i love that i love that um I guess, is there anything else you'd like to talk about of your faith journey? Um, I think that's really cool. And then we can, I want to talk a little bit more about kind of what clothing you offer and like what that looks like. Uh, if you do like the season releases, I don't know how any of this works. So <laughs> if you could talk a little bit more about that. Um, so wait, which one do you want to say? What do you want me to talk about first? Whichever way. Yeah, talk about your faith journey a little bit more. Okay, yeah, um, definitely um, was definitely a roller coaster. Um, starting high school, doing Young Life um, from college. Um, just really having those mentorships from my co- uh, my coaches um, mm-hmm. really going into me. And then just those those life experiences that you go through that really uh, mm-hmm. make you really look at life differently. Um, mm-hmm. And just knowing that, you know, um, God has had me this whole way and he has steered me from paths I shouldn't have been on. Right, <laughs> right. Quick and put you back on the right path. Um, but just um, going through those trials, um, I think, he used basketball for me to really, to understand that I'm more than basketball. Um, yeah. That has um, more for me than just to be dribbling a ball. Not saying that that's by any means diminishing basketball, but it's just like, um, I'm just bigger, I'm bigger than basketball. Like he has a yeah. plan for me. He, has, he gave me this platform to be able to speak, um, to speak life and to, um, to, to just, uh, walk out my faith um and mm-hmm. not just talk it out um and so it's really just giving me that platform to say my story and my journey of how you don't have to be the most successful to be grateful for life and be blessed to for the little things that you have and the big mm-hmm. things that you have and um just that faith aspect and with my husband uh, he's been a huge like factor and a huge part of that in my mm-hmm. walk um you know being there when I got baptized and all that things and doing yeah. things right before we got married and being celibate mm-hmm. and all that thing. So that walk and that faith is so true and dear to me that like, I think I would be a burden if I did not share my testimony, my story with people. I feel like God would be very disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I think, I mean, obviously we haven't spoken a whole lot throughout the years, but like kind of watching from afar and like knowing you in high school a little bit, like Tiffany bias was synonymous with really good basketball. And so it's really cool to see you kind of break out of that, but using that as a step stool. So it's not like you're just throwing the basketball side away. You've kind of earned this platform. You were amazing in high school, amazing in college, accomplished the highest things in the WNBA, but now you can use that to launch your own clothing brand to like, like you said, kind of speak into these other girls that might need a role model. Like you had great role, role models, but it's cool to see you kind of giving that down the line as well. Yeah. And I just want to, and I want to give back to the community. I feel like I've been gone for so long and, um, I, I know Wichita, you do a great job of just, um, shining light on people that, you know, that's in the community and that's, that's excelling in whatever they're doing. And I feel like it's that time to kind of come back and just give back to the community and just let them, you know, know, appreciate the support of gr- when growing up and things like that. And, you know, I love coming back to Wichita. I come back a lot more now. Um, at least once a month and I just want to support, you know, the businesses and, and, um, be there for the people and letting, you know, putting much on the map a little bit. So I think having that platform and being able to do that and shine light back from or back to where I came from is it's huge for me too. Yeah. I think it's really cool. And I think uh, some of the names, I mean, a lot of people, there's a surprisingly amount of athletes have made it pro from Wichita, but we don't really know their names necessarily. And I think that is kind of a shame. And so that is something we try to do. But I think with that mentality, I mean, living in Dallas rather than traveling everywhere is probably helpful. You're not too far away, but um, giving back and kind of putting up like the Just a Kid from Wichita camp. And I know um, you've talked about foundation in the past, whatever that looks like. Um, I think that's how you kind of establish yourself, um, but establish Wichita more because like a little girl right now might not know who Tiffany bias is, but when you're coming back every year and doing camps or whatever else that looks like, they're going to know, okay, 
one, she's really good at basketball. Two, she's really awesome and faith-based. But three, she is calling my name. She's helping me, teach me how to shoot, whatever that looks like. And that's something, a, I mean, eight, 10, 12, 15 year old girl remembers forever when somebody like you comes back and does that. Exactly. So I'm definitely in talks with a lot of people trying to see what that would look like. Mm -hmm. uh, just trying to plan something for the year to come, um, how we can do something um, for, you know, different holidays, whatever it is, yeah. multiple times where it's not where I hate it to be where it's just a camp a year and that's all you right. get. Right. I, I, I want to give more. I want to um, give more of myself and and be more um, for the community. So I want to, you know, some type of mentorship or something, some type of program where you're yeah. able to reach out and feel like you can touch the people that have excelled in whatever they're doing. Yeah. And it's not something where it's like, dang, I wish I could, or I met her or whatever, but no, like we have something where you can actually ask all the questions that you need and sure. you know, be better than what we were, you know? So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, as, as you kind of come up with those plans and everything, please let me know and I'll help share that and get that, that word out. Yay. <laughs> um, so just a little bit more about God benefits. So everyone, if you're watching the video, she's got a God benefits hat on right now. What, what other kind of merch, um, or I don't know if, I don't want to say merch cause I don't think that diminishes it, but it, it looks awesome. But what other things do you offer? Um, so right now we're going to do, um, we have t-shirts and sweatshirts, of course. Um, that's my big thing, my go-to, I kind of like dress them up, dress them down. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're coming out with graphic tees, um, the next month, um, we're coming out with like kind of these shorts, these tweed shorts, cause it's still hot, you know, I'm mm -hmm. this weather it's hot too. So I will be hot for there is a fly. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but be hot for a, a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so we're doing shorts. Um, we're going to come out with, um, what is it called? I, I'm blanking. Sweatsuits. Mm -hmm. um, fall. Um, so I'm in jacket. So it's kind of like a little bit of the basics. Yeah. Um, kind of like that type of with graphic tees. Very cool. And where can people find this? It's thegodbenefits.com. Yeah. Um, super simple. Just put the in front of God Benefits. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah. That cool. Will... And we'll share that for sure. Um, so you love fashion. Um, are you designing like what what's your what do you like the best do you like running the whole business do you just like the fashion part do you like a little bit of everything um so i'm definitely learning this is definitely a learning curve for me but i'm definitely the fashion part okay the business <laughs> part. i went to school for business i'm a freaking me <laughs> but it's just like i just know my strength like i love designing i love the textures i love the patterns i love going to like you know the the fabric district and i love to putting it all together and like and sketching and stuff like that um the business part i love marketing mm -hmm. um, but when it comes down to like the little stuff and all that like <laughs> you really have to have someone else do it because it's just like that sure. little are the ones that like make you successful <laughs> right 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 and so i'm definitely on more on the like the creative side i love that side yeah for sure that's that's very cool um is there anything that I missed about any of this stuff? And then I just kind of have a few other questions. Um, I feel like, no, I think, I think I've touched it all. From awesome. Yeah, no, I think we covered a lot. That was awesome. Um, this next section, um, I know we have a few minutes left, but um, I, I asked these questions to everybody. I kind of stole these from some other podcasts I like, and then I just got a couple questions about Wichita. Um, but what is something that you often recommend to people, whether it's a movie or a book or a podcast or music or anything, what's something you recommend to people? Oh, that is, oh my gosh. I've never got asked that question. That's really good. But something I recommend. I always recommend food. Okay, like, perfect. Foodie. Like I love food. So if I have a good spot that I've been to, or um, I'm really obsessed. My weakness is bubble tea. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a foodie. Yeah, so food. All right. Do you have a favorite spot in Wichita? I know you've kind of been bouncing around and there's a ton of new stuff now, but have you been anywhere new since you've been back? You know what? I love homegrown. Mm, oh yeah. First time. Okay. This is going to be super sad, but the first, like last couple of weeks ago was the first time I've ever went. And it's awesome though. It's really good. So Did you go to uh, Bradley fair or downtown. I went to Bradley fair, yeah. but people told me downtown's better. Uh, I, they're both great. I don't know. Okay. I've been to both a few times and they're both good. So right, I'm making sure I need, do I need to go both or Bradley fair is okay. Uh, Bradley fair is great. It is cool downtown though. Cause there's that new park right next to it. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so maybe I need to go see that too then. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, do you have a favorite failure in any aspect of your life? I love how you, that's like a, a favorite failure. <laughs> um, favorite failure, oh my gosh, that's really good. I would just say, I think, I hate to say this is a failure because I've gotten to the highest level, but I just think basketball. Yeah. 
I think just because it taught me so much mm -hmm. in in the valley. So yeah. No, I think that's great. Yeah. Um, kind of the flip side of that, what is your definition of success? Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so changed growing. Um I think my definition of success is just, are you truly happy doing what you're doing? Um, it used to be, um, how much money am I going to make? And now mm -hmm. it's like truly happy. And are you truly walking in what God has for you? I think that's what I am tunnel vision of what my success is. Um, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me about a life motto you live by or what is some of the best advice you've received? Life motto. Um, you are really getting me. I'm never speechless. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say some the best advice um, is if one door is closed, there's always a window open. Um, that's the best advice, advice I've ever gotten because I'm like, yes, because I, I don't take no for an answer. Perfect. Um, the best motto. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's kind of a motto too. That's that, what, is. That's, I can that, is, that counts. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was that counts. I'll, I'll get you covered. <laughs> I, I, I do give these questions. If somebody asks, I'll give questions prior, but I, I do like to put people on the spot because you're giving good answers. So <laughs> um, what is a habit that you've developed over the past few years that's most improved your life? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, habit that's most improved my life. And it could be as a mom, because I know that changes everything. So I'm still trying to learn that. That's <laughs> um, yeah, we're trying to figure that part, the whole parenthood thing out still too. So okay, well, I have to okay. So for parent aspect of it, I think it's definitely I have not cared so much what people think. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying I've always cared what people thought, but I think that when it comes to my time and my importance of what's really my priority, mm -hmm. um it's really like, you know, my family. Um, and I don't mm -hmm. feel bad. So like, I can't make something, I can't make an event. I can't do this because of X, Y, Z, my family needs me. Um, right. that's one of them for parenthood. Um, a good habit that I have over the years, I think that intentional time, um, I've definitely have been more selfless about, you know, either reading or just, um, spending time with the Lord and just making sure that mm -hmm. my day starts off well. Um, I think that's a habit that I have grown better at. No, that's great. And I, I've definitely been on the the bad side of that, not taking that time and not oh. being kind of selfish about that time. And it does not start the day off, right? <laughs> oh, I completely, I, I, I slip and slide some time on that, but mm -hmm. I feel better about that. Um, I just notice my stressors during the day don't bother me as much. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just have a couple questions about Wichita. So what is your favorite part of Wichita? Or are there any hidden gems about Wichita that you like? Favorite part, East Side. That's <laughs> <laughs> Represent. <laughs> that's still a thing too. There's always the East versus West Side people. And I'm like, I don't have a beef with the West Side. I just never go to the West Side. So. And that's what I meant by, I don't ever go to the West Side. So I stay on the East Side. That's where I've always lived. Um, but um, a hidden gem. I don't really have a hidden gem. I, that's so sad to say, um, but I really am trying to find a hidden gem now. Yeah. Um, I really stayed in my bubble when I went to Wichita just because I was kind of like my safe, like, not oh, safe, yeah. like when I come, like I just love spending time with my family. I'm at the house. Um, I guess my hidden gem is my parents' house, but no one needs to know where my parents live. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to stay hidden. <laughs> it's going to stay hidden. Um, but no, All yeah. Right. Um, let's see. So the next one. Is there anything you wish Wichita had that it doesn't, or what would you improve about Wichita? Shopping. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> what kind of shopping would you like? <laughs> I know that's awful. Um, just a little bit of everything. I think um, just more variety. Yeah. I think we're kind of, I mean, we're conservative and there's yeah. nothing, like that, but I just, just a little bit more variety, something that's more fresh and culture, um, just for the, you know, the younger generation. Um, I would mm -hmm. love for more people to want to stay in Wichita, even though I'm not living in Wichita currently, but sure. that's a great place to raise a family. And mm -hmm. I just want to be like, you know, fresh and young. Yeah, absolutely. You can come on, open a, a bias brands shop and you can yeah, be the like curator. A, a pop-up shop or something. You could do it. Why not? <laughs> um, all right. So I just have one more question. What does Wichita mean to you? Oh, 
which I mean, I mean, it's home. I think it's always going to be home. It's that place where um, I started everything. It's that place where I can always come back to and really just take a breath and um, know that everything's going to be okay. Um, it's definitely a place that um, I guess that is my hidden gem is Wichita. I think that I did not realize it when I was younger, but now that when I do go home, it's literally a breath of fresh air for me. So yeah, absolutely. I agree hundred percent. Tiffany, thanks so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited to kind of see your path forward. Um, it's been fun to watch basketball, but it's going to be cool to watch God benefits and, um, your family and everything. That's really cool. So, um, come back to Wichita. I'm sure everybody wants to see you. Um, it's gonna be cool to see what you do with that, whether it's foundation or camps and everything like that. So, um, please share, but where can people find and kind of follow what you're up to right now? Yeah, you can definitely, um, follow me on Instagram. It's at Tiffany bias. Um, I am Tiffany Bias Fatman, but that's the, sure. um, definitely have to follow it, find me. Um, and then the God benefits, but yeah, everything that I do, I post on my story. I post on my, my store, my feed. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely try to be open and vulnerable and making sure people know what's going on. So definitely follow me on that. Perfect. We'll make sure to share everything, um, share the God benefits and everything else. But yeah, thanks again, Tiffany. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely.